The second time through the loop, i's value will be 1. v7 sub 1 is little e. m2 sub little e doesn't exist, and consequently a pair with key little e and value 0 is created in m2. I get back a reference to the value part, whose current value is 0, but I'm assigning 1 times 2, which is 2, in place of that 0. So now I have an entry in M2 with a key of little e and a value of 2. The third time through the loop, i's value is 2. v7 sub 2 is little l. So I'm going to get an entry in M2 with little l as the key and 0 as the value. I get back a reference to that pair, and I'm assigning 2 times 2 is 4 in place of the initial 0 that that value part had. Notice that the fourth time through the loop, i's value is 3, and v7 sub 3 is little l again. Now, because the little l key already exists in M2, this is not going to create a new pair. What I am going to get back is a reference to the value part of the pair whose key is little l. That value part currently contains a 4, that is the 2 times 2 that we stored in the previous iteration of the loop, but now I'm going to replace that 4 with a 6. So m2 sub little l is now 6. Then we store 8 into m2 sub little o, and 10 into m2 sub exclamation mark, and we're done with that loop. In this red range 4 loop, I'm simply printing out the elements of v7, which are J E L L O exclamation mark. And then I'm using each element of V7 as an index or a key into my map M2. Okay, so this loop is going to run six times. The first time through, E is going to be set to little j, and I'll be told that M2 sub little j is. 0. The next time, e is set to little e, and I'm told that m2 sub little e is 2. The third time, I'm told that m2 sub little l is 6. And because I have two little l's in v7, I also get a 6 when I look up m2 sub little l again. And then, of course, I get 8 for my key of little o and 10 for my key of exclamation mark. Continuing on, if I do an index of 22 into v7, the behavior of that is going to be undefined because 22 is well outside of the range from 0 to 5, which are the valid subscripts in v7. My program might crash, but let's pretend that it didn't. And I'm not seeing anything in the output, so perhaps that means that v7 sub 22 is accidentally a space character or accidentally a tab character, or perhaps it's a null character, and so I'm getting no output followed by a new line. On the other hand, if I use a non-existent key in M2, we know that what's going to happen there is that a pair will be created with key of little z and default value of 0. I'll get back a reference to that 0, and therefore 0 is what's going to be displayed on my screen. Finally, we have a couple of statements that are commented out showing that if you use the at member function on either a vector or a map with a bad index, 
that would throw an exception and crash the program. Here in slide 45, we've got a table showing various ways of obtaining iterators, marking the beginnings and ends of containers. We've been using begin to obtain an iterator for the first element of a container, and we've been using end as the iterator that is just past the end of the container. But there are also what are called reverse iterators and const iterators that you should be familiar with. So that's what we're going to be illustrating in the next few examples. So here on slide 47, we have an illustration of the difference between iterators and reverse iterators. Begin, as we know, here we're looking at a vector as an example, gives us back an iterator for the initial element in the container. And as we increment our iterator forward, eventually we will arrive at end, which is just beyond the final element of the container. A reverse iterator, on the other hand, when you use R begin, gives you an iterator for the final element in the container. And perhaps weirdly, as you increment a reverse iterator, incrementing, that is plus plusing a reverse iterator, moves backward until eventually you arrive at R end, the reverse end, which is just prior to the initial element of the container. Okay, so by using iterators between begin and end, that allows you to traverse forward through the container in whatever sense forward means. And using R begin and R end, that allows you to traverse backward. Now, as you can see on slide 45, all of the different container types support forward iterators, starting from begin and going up through but not including end. For the unordered containers, reverse iteration doesn't really make any sense. An iterator from begin up to but not including end will go through each of the values contained in the unsorted container, but the order in which you receive those values is not defined, not predictable, and so the whole idea of going through this not predictable sequence in reverse is kind of nonsense and consequently reverse iterators are not provided for the unordered containers. Likewise, reverse iterators are not provided for the forward list. In a forward list you can only go forward. Here starting on slide 48 we have some code illustrating forward and reverse iterators. The code is three slides long and the output of the code is shown on slide 51. So let's walk through these examples and see how these forward and reverse iterators are working. We start out by creating v8 which is a vector of care containing six cares h-e-l-l-o exclamation mark then we use iterators on v8, v8.begin and v8.end, to create d3, which is a deck of care. lc2, on the other hand, is using reverse iterators, rbegin and rend. So whereas the d3 deck of care contains these six cares in the same order as v8, the list of cares, LC2, contains these characters in the reverse order that they're stored in D3. Just as a reminder of the awful actual syntax, if you want an iterator to traverse through your deck of care, the full type name of that is iterator that is a member of the deck of care class. And we're doing the usual thing here stepping forward, starting from d3.begin, going up to but not including d3.end. So that's going to display H-E-L-L-O.